my family's conversion to Orthodox Christianity. We've left our home in America. We're trying to learn this very difficult language. Our first week here, it drops down to minus 35 Celsius. Coldest Christmas in Russia in 120 years. Mm -hmm. We didn't know yet how we were even going to immigrate. We just came as tourists and just said, we're going to figure it out. I think it started out not as, you know, researching someplace to move or even knowing a lot about Russia. It started with Really a couple of things. One was our conversion, my family's conversion to Orthodox Christianity. The other half is just, you know, the sadness with which I've seen the decay, you know, the moral decay in America over the past, you know, decade plus. In many different ways, you know, many different things I've not been happy with. Um, but one of the biggest that just really, in a negative way, struck a chord with me was this whole idea of you know homosexual marriage. They were determined to redefine what marriage actually means. We just started looking. And I considered you know some countries in South America. I uh, looked at various countries in Europe. A couple things that were really important to my wife and to me was that you know wherever we move needs to have legal homeschooling. Now people want to send their kids to public school or a private school, that's fine, but we've already always homeschooled our children. That's the way we want to go, so we wanted to keep doing that. That really narrowed things down because there's not a lot of countries where uh, homosexual marriage is not recognized, you know, civil unions are not recognized, and at the same time, homeschooling is legal. And so that, you know, brought us down to a short list. I came here, I came here again. The third time I flew here, um, I, my wife and I decided we're moving. We're going. And came to the Rostov Veliki area, not Rostov on Don, but Rostov Veliki, which is about a three hour drive north of Moscow. Fell in love with the place. It's a, it's a city that is more than 1,100 years old, which is just mind boggling to me. You know, in, in America, if you can find a 200 year old building, it's like this ancient artifact. And you know, they, have, they have pubs and dachas here that are far older than that. There's literally five Orthodox Christian monasteries just in the city limits of Rostov. Now there's more outside it, but just in the city limits of this little city of 30,000 people, uh, there's five Orthodox Christian monasteries. That's more than there are in Texas. You know, <laughs> you know Texas, you know, which is where I lived 24 years of my life, which I love, um, has four Orthodox monasteries in the whole state. And it's a state that's huge. It's the size of France. I've always been not the city mouse, but the country mouse. I like to be out where there's trees and land. And, and so I needed a place that had civilization, grocery stores, gas stations, but was far away from the big city. You know, if I need to hop in a car and, and drive down the interstate, down to Moscow, I can do it. No big deal. I can drive one hour up to Yaroslavl more than a half million people, any stores I need, they're there. But just for my day-to-day -day life, I like the slow play, the slow pace. I like you know living on an acre of land, um, having a tractor, planting a garden, and just, just being able to live our lives quietly and in peace. We're in America, we had several acres of land and about a 2,000 square foot house. Now we have one acre of land and a 1,700 square foot house. So it's not bad. So yeah, uh, you don't see a lot of uh, two-car garages in rural Russia, Yeah. but I'm a spoiled American. I wanted to <laughs> you have the real I, thing. Well, now here's the deal. Here's the deal. We actually tried it the other way. Uh, you know, we own two cars. Yeah. You know, there's 10 of us in the family. A car didn't hold 10 people, so we have two cars. Yeah. And, you know, we've spent the last few Russian winters realizing that in Russia, winter is not something that happens for a couple of weeks and you deal with it. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, they, it's they, months. They do they do winter professionally here. Yeah. And so, you know, literally months of scraping ice, uh, brushing well, wait, snow Speaking off. of professional, I just wanted to say, yeah, <laughs> this is a, <laughs> it's a real deal. Not, not too useful in <laughs> Illinois or Texas, right. that's for sure. That's the real deal. Wow. 
proof that we're in rural <laughs> Russia, but that we're here in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look and it just looks like this normal Russian dacha and stuff, but then yeah. you see this two-car garage with electric yeah. garage doors. Well, here is this old building. They started building with logs, yeah. finished out with some, you know, some older wood siding. It's been sitting here for years. Yeah. And then here's this giant, like a satellite dish, dish you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's because instead of turning this into a banya slash sauna, yeah. um, I turned this into my office. This is where I teach a lot of my English lessons uh -huh. online via Zoom. Yeah. And so I have a separate high-speed internet connection to my office. <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> it is like working in a banya. That is great. Yeah, so it's just wow. this wonderful little wood room. I've got a couch out here, a small library little fridge with some Cokes in it. Uh, uh, printer, I set up my laptop over here on this big old homemade desk. Uh, We've got the high-speed internet coming in. Yeah. And I just, you know, sit here in this easy chair, chill, teaching kids English. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoy it. It's peaceful out here. Oh, and here's the greenhouses. You can see oh, yeah. I have three over here. And, you know, they're pretty big uh, greenhouses. Yeah. And it's just a really great place to- Were those your... here before or did you no, put those we, we added, No, okay. we added those. And so it's just great, you know, here, this, you know, spring gets going late, you know, yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. in America, maybe you're planting stuff in March or April here, you don't really want to plant stuff till May. Yeah. But with this, it warms everything up a little earlier and it goes a little later. So you can actually start growing stuff there in April. Oh, yeah. You can keep it growing past September, October. And again, talking about Russian stereotypes. Wow, it's a Belarus tractor. Yeah. That's great. Oh, did you put the racing no, on there? that's no. how it came, but believe it or not. <laughs> got in Yaroslavl. Yeah, it's got right. the big lights on it. And, <laughs> That's yeah, great. Nice souped up racing tractor. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so in America, we had really low taxes. You know, we were out in the country. Yeah. I had a country house, several acres of land, and, and it was still, you know, we, we were still paying like over a thousand dollars a year taxes, yeah. but that's low. You know, like uh, my sister, other people I know, they're paying five, six, seven, eight thousand American dollars every year just on real estate taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on uh, uh, property taxes. Property, yeah. Well, here it's amazing. Um, every year, you know, I've got this house, I've got an acre of land, and uh, every year I pay less than fifty dollars. Yeah. For, the, for the whole year for the property taxes. Yeah, I paid, so, eight, I paid eight bucks this year. Yeah, it's just, it's like, it's almost <laughs> so, nothing. Yeah. It's just mind blowing. So technically, yes, there's property taxes here, but yeah, it's very but, nominal. Exactly. That first year was, was very tough. Uh, it was made even tougher because, I don't know, a month, two months after we got here, I was diagnosed with a certain form of cancer. And so, you know, throw everything together, you know, I've, We've left our home in America. We've come to a new place. We're trying to learn this very difficult language. Um, our first week here, it drops down to minus 35 Celsius, which is very unusual. It usually does not get that cold here. It did the first week we were here. <laughs> Coldest Christmas in Russia in 120 years. And, you know, a lot of frustrations, a lot of difficulties. Uh, we didn't know yet how we were even going to immigrate. We just came as tourists and just said, we're going to figure it out. You know, you're already carrying this massive load. You're already just barely able to walk. And then, oh, let's throw cancer on top of that. So instead of doing what I was planning on doing, that first summer, I was hoping to drive my family all over Russia and show them the beauties of St. Petersburg and the beauties of Moscow, these amazing cathedrals and monasteries and just, the, you know, the beautiful landscapes across Russia and the trees and the ponds and the rivers. Instead, my wife, not speaking Russian, uh, and our eight children, not speaking Russian, had to be stuck in that apartment in Rostov while I was three hours away in Moscow throwing my guts up on chemotherapy. Uh, you know, that, that stank. <laughs> it was really, it was, it, was, it was bad. Thankfully, now that we are, you know, permanent residents of Russia, um, most medical care that we get is free. We don't have to pay for it. But, you know, even if for a short period of time, if you do have to pay for it, and even if you get hit with something major, you know, like cancer and surgery and chemotherapy, um, you know, it would break your back in America versus here, it's just a pain, but it's doable. For the surgery and the three week hospital stay, I paid a total of, I'd say less than $1,500. Out of pocket, 100%. While in America, I was a computer engineer for 20 years, near close to 20 years. 
And so our income came from the computer work that I did. And then I basically was a priest for free. Um, uh, the, the, you know, the bishop did ordain me as a deacon and then as a priest. And I served as a priest in America, but I was not getting paid for this. Uh, most of what I do now is teach English. That's how we feed our family. And, you know, so the church, you know, the Russian Orthodox Church hasn't sent me any money, <laughs> you know, e even to this day. Uh, they've warmly accepted me. But, you know, even in Russia, if, if you want to make money as a priest, you'd, you're going to have to find a big enough congregation that's going to be able to support you. Um, you can't go out in the middle of nowhere, a small church of maybe 15 or 20 people, and expect them to be able to support, you know, a family of 10. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, perhaps if I lived in Moscow, then they could put me in a church where it would be feasible for that to be my only job. But out here, we're basically doing the same thing that, that we did in America. Um, you know, I have a source of income, there's work that I do, but as a priest, you know, I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because I have faith in Christ and this is how, this is how I want to serve God. I've got a bunch of students. I have uh, dozens, um, I don't know, maybe around 40 students currently uh, that I teach just online via Zoom. And then there's nearly a hundred kids in the 10th and 11th grade boarding school at Barnesky Monastery where I teach them sometimes online and sometimes I go there and I teach them face to face. Well, like I said, uh, Rostov Veliki, uh, population about 30,000 people. There are five incredible Orthodox Christian monasteries. Uh. And this is one of them. This is Varnitsky Monastery. Mm -hmm. And this is surprising to a lot of people. It's actually the birthplace of St. Sergius of Rodnish. Oh, I see. That's our patron saint of this podcast of and course. patron saint of much more. Huh. I yeah, didn't so, even know he was born here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He when he was a little older, his family moved to Radnish, uh, but he was actually born right here. Uh, um, in fact, his parents, uh, the icons on each side of the archway right there, so mm -hmm. Saints Kirill and Maria, his parents. Ah, uh, I. Uh, and so anyway, uh, on the right here, you see this big red cathedral here. Yeah. That big red church. That's approximately where their house was 700 years ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, don't know how they keep track of that, but I'm impressed. They have an incredible Orthodox Christian school here. Mm -hmm. uh, so here in Rostov, you can go to public school, you can homeschool, yeah. or you can send your kids to the Orthodox school here, which yeah. is free of charge. They don't mm -hmm. charge for it. And uh, the final two grades of high school, 10th grade and 11th grade, mm -hmm. um, is a world-class boarding school for boys. Yeah, it, It's unbelievable. They send boys here from all over the country. They test, mm -hmm. you know, the best ones get to stay here. And it's, it's almost like a prep school. Yeah. A lot of the boys that complete their studies here end up going straight into seminary and mm -hmm. going through with flying colors. A number of them are already clergy in the church now. Yeah. And so for those two grades, 10th grade and 11th grade for the boarding school, I come here and I teach English. Yeah. All right. Nearly 100 students. We have this interview, we're going to talk and talk, but however many hours we talk and you piece it together, it's still just going to be a fraction of what we've got to experience over the past several years. Just, just soaking in Russia, just realizing what a, a gym this really is. What, what a, is it perfect? Absolutely not. You know, if you want to find some negative things here, you'll find them. Of course, you know, <laughs> friends, uh, relatives, people back home were just terrified. They just thought, you're crazy, you're nuts. Don't you know that Russia is terrifying, that Russia's scary? I'm afraid, you know, something's bad gonna happen. So I started taking photos. I just, you know, go to a gas station. I go through a grocery store and take pictures and just simple, normal, everyday things. And I would get this amazing response from people online. Uh, people would write back to me and say, oh my goodness, the grocery stores are full of food. Yeah, you know, that's what they're for, you know, they're full of food. But people have this idea that it's still the 70s or the 80s. But that's where I decided, um, you know, the, the website that I, that I am editor on, Russian Faith, 
a lot of what we try to do there is just tell the people truth about simple things in Russia. It doesn't have to be out of this world, just showing people churches, showing people uh, community gatherings, showing people Russian food. Um, things that are just mundane and everyday are still amazing to Americans because they start to realize, hey, Russia, there's like normal people in Russia. There's husbands and wives and children and they have schools and playgrounds and, and good tasting food and, and really good music and beautiful dresses for the women and folk singing. And, um, so to me, it's kind of been my own little tiny, you know, I don't want to say missionary project because that has too many connotations, but I really just want to show people um, that Russia is a good place. Yeah, we, we like tripled the uh, population of the village when we moved in. So. Oh yeah, I guess you did. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't think about that. Oh.